Chapter 8, The Box, Hippie Foot, Thursday, May 3rd. The dashboard's green light illuminated in the reflection of my windshield as the clock flashed to 9.11 p.m. My black Pontiac Grand Am GT passed smoothly through gate number 7. There was no turning back. My car came to a complete stop, and I rolled down my window. A security guard in a bright pink shirt greeted us at the window. Welcome to Common Grounds. How was the drive, boys? I'm going to need to see your three-day wristbands. Blake and I both lifted our wristbands. It was quite the trip, man. He chuckled, lifting the gate up with a smile. Well, welcome to the festival. Have a wonderful weekend. Blake looked over at me. Everyone's so friendly around here. My foot pushed hard against the gas pedal as we sped off into the festival. We traveled along the quarter-mile paved road with nothing in sight, until the very end, where 20 tents with huge lettering lit up the night. Security checkpoint. A security checkpoint, I yelled out of fear. Blake stuttered lightly underneath his breath. Just chill, we got this. I glanced up from my speedometer and gently tapped my foot against the brakes. My eyes lit up at the sight of 20 white tents lined up in a row, radiating brightly in the dark night. Stress and fear overwhelmed my mind. All the pink-shirted security workers were assisting sheriffs as they frivolously emptied, searched, and reassembled the bags out of every vehicle. At other stations, they were searching vehicles completely inside and out. From the battery compartment under the hood to the spare wheel compartment in the trunk. They were looking through everything, and they were looking everywhere. My mind raced with fear. They're going to find my drugs. I'm fucked. They're going to find my drugs. What am I going to do? I looked over at Blake, trying to hide my fear and nervousness. I guess it's too late to boof it. We both bursted out laughing. <laughs> my foot tapped against the brake pedal again as I slowly approached another Common Ground staff member wearing a pink shirt. He bent down and laid his white forearm along the window panel. Hey y'all, welcome to Texas. Proceed over there to the left behind the silver car under tent number 18. The security guard backed away from our car and directed us towards an older 2004 silver Chevy Malibu. The veins in my arms, legs, and eyes became tense and visible as the word sheriff reflected off of the back of two individual shirts searching through the silver Malibu in front of us. Blake pointed towards the tent. Only two sheriffs at our tent. Something in my conscious mind went off like an alarm clock in the morning. They're gonna find my weed in my backpack. They're really gonna empty out our entire trunk. Will I ever be a lawyer with a marijuana ticket? The thoughts raced through my head. I felt a sense of doubt. I was breaking the law and I knew it. Anyone could see it in my eyes. Anyone could hear it in my voice. Everyone could sense it through my actions. After 15 minutes of scuffling through the silver car's bags, my mind spiraled, twirled, and became stuck in a whirlwind of paranoia. Then the sheriff announced fiercely, Pack your bags up and head on into the festival. I pushed my foot back down against the accelerator, pushing our car past the point of no return. I stopped completely under the white tent. The officers yelled from the front of my car, Roll down all your windows, put your car in park, pop the trunk, and exit out of the car. I rolled down all the windows. I stepped on the brake and shifted my car into park. I hit the trunk button along the left side panel. Then my heart beat raced at an uncontrollable rate as I stepped out of my car. Thump, 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 thump. Instantly, the sheriff got right up in my face and gripped tightly onto the sides of my pink colored shorts. He tore my pockets inside and out and then proceeded to pat me down. His hands wrapped tightly around my waistline as he moved around and then down my legs towards my feet. He finished the in-depth search by submerging his fingers deep into the sides of my shoes. I don't think I've ever seen anyone stick their hand into someone's shoe, but this officer stuck both of his fingers inside my shoes after the 24-hour long ride. After being patted down, both of the sheriffs stared at me and Blake directly. I could feel their eyes scan up and down my body. The lead sheriff who patted me down started to speak with enforcement. Now we are going to search your car. If you have any cocaine, MDMA, marijuana, acid, or shrooms, just let us know now. The sheriff turned his back away from us and pointed at a huge black amnesty box. If you tell us now, we will gladly deposit them into the black amnesty box you see right behind us. His face turned back towards us. His thick white mustache moved along his pink thin lips. If you tell us now, before we start our search, we will not charge you with anything. Unless, of course, you have pounds of some type of drug on you. Once we start the search of your vehicle, however, any drugs we find, we will charge you with. 
and bring you to jail for. So do you want to tell us about any drugs that are currently in your vehicle? My eyes connected with the sheriff's eyes and became locked. I felt intimidated, and it reminded me of the judge's eyes filled with disappointment and rage as he sentenced Mr. Brown away. I felt out of control, out of my body, disconnected from life. I honestly believed the sheriff could see right through me, deep into my soul. And just like the judge, the sheriff now controlled my future. The leader's white mustache stopped moving, and the other sheriff's white forehead crinkled. I looked both of them in the eyes precisely as I attempted to play it cool. I replied with a serious tone, Nope, I'm going to be a lawyer, sir. We don't have anything like that in this car. Blake smiled back at the sheriff's holding up his camera. I'm here for business. I'm the videographer for Seven Lions. Their faces altered into grins. Then the sheriff with the thick white mustache crossed his arms, and the other sheriff chuckled. Ha <laughs> ha, sounds like we might need the dogs for these boys. The lead sheriff unfolded his arms. Well, let's get searching. The sheriff spun around quickly and began to toss out our bags one after another. Eventually, the trunk was completely empty. Each bag had been tossed along the side of a white table, and now the word sheriff on the back of their shirts became bolder and bolder as the word reflected directly into my eyes. My palms began to sweat as the lead sheriff started to search through the first bag thoroughly on the white folding table under the tent. I watched the other sheriff pull out several lenses from Blake's camera bag, one after another. Blake yelled at him, Be careful with my equipment, man. That stuff's expensive. He continued pulling lens after lens apart. Every touch left a blemish, and each one was placed carelessly on the beat-up white folding table. Really? Those are my fucking lenses. Y'all are some real McAssholes. After they searched through the camera bag, they continued to rifle through the tent, burner, canopy, and grocery bags. Every compartment of the tent searched. The burner side compartments torn off. The canopy broken into three pieces and scattered along the side of the white folding table. Every single package of food shaken, smelt, smashed, twisted before being approved and tossed back onto the table. I tried to calm my nerves when I noticed my green bag was the next item to be lifted up and searched on the white table. I looked straight ahead at the tent next to ours where a group of young white college kids exited out of their white 2014 Chevy Tahoe. I looked at the three white males who were all equipped with their own pair of Oakley sunglasses and Spurry shoes. Bunch of fucking bros. They probably buy their drugs on the inside. My eyes shifted towards the two women dressed in all white Lululemon tracksuits being patted down by the security women and to no surprise they found nothing. However, Within seconds of searching the back seat, one of the sheriffs emerged with a white substance in his right hand and a hollowed out Pepsi can with the top popped off in his left hand. I became worried. My bloodshot eyes focused in on the two white sheriffs who had the biggest grins on their faces after finding the drugs. Fucking reminded me of kids at a candy store, completely empowered and in control. My eyes shifted away from the vehicle, back to my bag, which was now directly in front of the sheriff on the table. I knew the two sheriffs searching through our belongings were getting closer and closer to my stash. My eyes closed for a few seconds. The sheriff's white hand slowly tugged my clothes out from the green backpack and placed them onto the white plastic tabletop. My heart began to pump faster and faster. Thump, 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 thump. The sheriff reached in and pulled out my multicolored shorts. Furiously, he ripped open the pockets on the shorts and pressed against the lining of the waistbands. The red ones, the green ones, the yellow ones. Then came the shirts, a black one, a white one, a Coachella tribal tee, and a few more graphic tees. Next, he pulled apart all my polo-colored socks. The green and black ones were first, then the all-white ones, and lastly, the white and red striped ones with white polo horses near the ankle. Each one tossed on the dirty ground along the side of the white tabletop. My mind raced. Was the sheriff going to rip out my boxer briefs? Was he going to empty out everything in my bag? Was he going to find my weed? The sheriff with the thick white mustache shook the bag completely upside down as his lips remained still. He's going to find my weed. My heart raced and raced. The sheriff bent down and picked up the sealed ounce of weed from off the dirt ground next to my socks. My heart stopped for a moment. The thump disappeared, stalling momentarily. Both the sheriffs erupted with laughter looking at Blake. Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! Then they both stared directly at me. The lead sheriff started walking towards me. My legs began to shake and my eyes became watery. The sheriff pointed at my polo socks. 
I'm guessing by the socks that this green backpack is yours. The sheriff continued to stare directly into my eyes, holding up the airtight vacuum sealed bag. I'm going to let you go because I want you to become a lawyer one day, but I'm going to remember your face, and if I see you again at this festival of drugs, I will arrest you. My heartbeat skipped a beat again and again and again until I felt some of the toxic stress dump physically out of my chest. I looked at the sheriff with a solid lump lodged in my throat. Thank you so much. Promise you, I'm done smoking weed for the rest of my life. You don't know how much this warning means to me. The two sheriffs took the sealed package and started walking towards a black amnesty box. Even with all the anxiety rushing through my brain, Something stuck out about that black box in my consciousness. Maybe it was the darkness of the box, or the fact that it had to be full of drugs. Then, I watched closely as the sheriff from the tent next to ours disposed of the white substance from the hollowed up pop can into the same box. My heart thumped rapidly. The sheriffs from both tents walked back from the black amnesty box together. Just like that, all the evidence they had against me just disappeared into a black dark space in a second into a box. Was this real life? Blake repacked his camera lenses and pieced his accessories back together. Meanwhile, I gathered all the bags from the table and stuffed them back into the trunk of my car. We waved to the sheriffs and thanked them for their kindness. Then we proceeded to pass them into the festival. Thump, thump. My heart raced like a NASCAR driver speeding past the lead car right before the checkered finish line. My mind glorified this victory. I just beat my first court case without even getting the citation sent to the prosecution office. My foot pushed down against the gas pedal as we moved forward through the gates. I stared in the mirror one last time as the black box disappeared behind us and my car zoomed past an overhead sign. Welcome to the community of happily ever after. We cruised at 15 miles per an hour as the car bottomed out repetitively over and over again on the dirt road. Let me tell you this. Don't drive a fucking lowrider Pontiac Grand Am GT on a fucking dirt road, let alone to a music festival with dirt roads. After we bottomed out 20 more times on the half mile dirt road, we became face to face with four brown and green street posts, which split the large intersection up into four different sectors full of campsites. We continued straight, progressing deeper and deeper into the festival. Off in the distance, lights flashed along the side of the road, lighting up our path. Music blared, interchanging with instrumentals, as the colorful tents flew by the sides of our windows in symmetrical rows. Vehicles of every make and model were scattered, parked, and stuffed in between and around tents. The further we traveled into the festival, the more intersections we crossed, the more it felt like we were traveling through a real post-medieval village. It could have just been the fake decor, however, the village felt surreal and alive. We turned onto 20th Street when the campsites started to disappear more and more. All the medieval street signs were now lit up with street lights. I turned my head to the left and glanced out my window. A huge grass field squared off by clothing vendors and food trucks radiated with an unexplainable amount of energy and lights. Blake hopped up out of his seat, pointing at the back area where the stage was located. My pupils expanded, looking off in the distance in the same direction. The stage appeared to be constructed to resemble an LED version of a campfire. I yelled to Blake, Look at the stage, bro! It's lit up like a campfire! Blake laughed at the stupidity of my comment. <laughs> Images stimulated my brain while the lights flashed directionless right before my eyes. Then a yellow triangle teepee outlined the DJ on the stage as the LED lights rapidly shuffled, green to red to yellow to blue to purple. With every blink, the lights shifted into new shapes, into a picture, into something meaningful. My dopamine receptors flooded with every direction and flick of light. Then the yellow lights morphed into a brown color while the lights expanded, transforming into a three-dimensional wood log. Blink, blink, blink. Red lights fluttered on top of the stage and synchronized with the flow of music. Then, right when the DJ dropped the instrumentals, fire shot up in the dark night in between the brown LED logs. There's the campfire! There's the campfire! Suddenly, Blake's hand gripped tightly onto my shoulder. Brakes, bro! Hit the brakes! I slammed my foot hard against the brake pedal. My head rocked forward, smacking against the stiff steering wheel. 
Blake's head struck the airbag compartment just inches away from the windshield. I raised my head up from the steering wheel, just in time to catch a huge group of ravers dancing swiftly in front of my windshield. Big ravers, small ravers, fat ravers, tall ravers, good looking ravers, girl ravers, male ravers. I rolled down my window and looked over at Blake. He clearly was seeing the same thing I was. I watched Blake prop himself out of the car window. He immediately started slamming his head back and forth in the air to the music. Two ravers in the back of the large group yelled through my driver's side window. Welcome to the festival! I pressed down on the gas pedal, spinning my rubber tires against the rocky dirt road. One street, two streets, four streets, a few more, then a right, two more streets, then we were there. 13th street. My brake lights lit up in the dark night. I cranked the steering wheel to my right towards a dead end. My eyes lit up with excitement at the reflection of the colorful license plates illuminating in my headlights. My eyes took in every plate originating from all around the United States. Washington, New York, Florida, California, Colorado, Minnesota, and now our car was joining the party, the Wisco Boys. My eyes locked onto a security guard halfway down the street. We followed his glow stick towards the dead end road. The car bottomed out three more times before a closed off metal fence ended our journey. The security guard yelled from the front of the car, pointing towards some trees along the fence. You can park right here at the end and have the last campsite located on the next street over in front of your car. I cranked the steering wheel to the right one last time. Then I shifted the car into park and stared at the thick maple trees in front of my windshield. The trees reminded me of the ravers passing by on the street. Each tree was different in shape and size, in appearance and height. The oxygen the trees released into the air reminded me of the happiness and vibes the attendees exerted into the air. My brain exploded with excitement. I'm finally in paradise. I finally took my life into my own hands and did something I wanted to do. We emptied the trunk and passed through an opening in between the maple trees to our campsite located on 12th Street, where we stockpiled our festival supplies. Once all of our supplies became stockpiled, we glanced around at our neighboring campsites on our right front and front right. They were all completely set up, but everyone appeared to be gone. My ears simultaneously picked up on a nasty bass pulsation traveling through the air from a faraway distance. It had to be the after hours stage we saw on the way in. We started to push up our four person tent. Click, click, click. With every click, the tent became more stable and set up. Click, click, click. The light in my head exploded as I stared at the tent, which became fully assembled within a minute. Within three more minutes, the last pin was being nailed tightly into the ground. Blake and I high-fived. That was a quick one. Shout out to my mom for the Sam's Club special. Next, we assembled the pop-up canopy by clicking the sides. Every pole locked into place, and with each click, the feeling of freedom locked itself into my mind. I could finally live in the moment. I wheeled my cooler into the canopy and got the rolling bar set up. It was time to celebrate and make Texas our home for the weekend. Blake zipped up the tent and I handed him the bottle of tequila. Nice work, mate. Now we just have to remember no matter how drunk and fucked up we get, we're on 12th Street. We both tapped our red cups together and tossed back a half cup of tequila. Then Blake shouted, Dude, I can definitely remember that. If we flip 12th Street around, it's 21st Street. Like 21 Jump Street, bro. True. We bumped fists. Then we proceeded to go shot for shot after shot. We both became drunk and energized. Our excitement masked the taste of the strong liquor flowing down our throats as the musical bass intensified louder and louder. My mind started to become intoxicated by the words being translated through the bass's rhythmic pulse. Walk this way, hippie. Come dance with me.